So let's think about putting it all together. Carol, where do we go from here? Okay. As I had indicated in the last little section, I had asked you to pull out Johnny. So hopefully you have Johnny and you've had a chance to read Johnny's present level statement. Just as a re uh, recap, we know that Johnny's in the sixth grade. He has, ha he has issues or challenges with reading fluency. He has good interpretation when given information orally, but he still reads slowly and the slow reading is what interferes with his comprehension of sixth grade material. So that's a recap of Johnny. So now, in order to be thinking about it, we want to um, review what we know about his area of need. In this case, if I, as I've already indicated, Johnny, uh, in Johnny's case, is about reading fluency. And one of the things I might stop here and mention is one of the reasons reading fluency is so critical is because it is one of the areas where the research has shown that reading fluency is um, a support to comprehension. Certainly vocabulary is important to comprehension, but if I'm reading so slowly that I'm taking all of my energy on deciphering and decoding words, then I'm not getting the message. So that's why it's so important to help children read at a rate that will uh, facilitate their comprehension. So in Johnny's case, it's reading fluency. So I want to also think about what has Johnny had as past instruction and progress. If Johnny's new to your school, you may not know that right away, but hopefully if Johnny's a student that's been in the school, you can go back and talk with the past teachers and find out what kind of instruction has Johnny received in the area of reading and where did it seem to be helpful and where not. How does Johnny's experience compare with similar sit students and similar situations? Um, because maybe there have been other students who have had issues or challenges with reading fluency. And so you would want to see what was successful with those other students. Has that been tried with Johnny or not? And then finally, what would be, what do you think could be expected for a one year period of time? And some of that will be based on what you know has been Johnny's history, but some of it might also be based on whether or not you have real good confidence in the instructional program that you have in your uh, available in your special education um, classroom or as part of your special education services. And if it's a strong uh, program, perhaps you may be able to make huge gains. And but you have to make those judgments. Those are in professional judgments that you have to make. So what might be some possible goals? I'm going to give you some, um, let me give you an assumption. I'm going to assume that I have in my school a really great program. Johnny hasn't participated in it, but it's really one of those that is intense instruction to really catch up on those reading um, phonetic skills and the uh, decoding skills, as, as well as some comprehension. So given that, and given the fact that I have learned that Johnny hasn't had real strong instruction in reading, particularly in decoding, I decide that given a literary passage written at the sixth grade level, remember Johnny's present level so that he reads fluently at 120 words per minute at the third grade level. But my program is so strong that I think that within a year I can get him all the way up to the sixth grade level, that he will read fluently at 120 to 130 words per minute with at least 90% accuracy on repeated trials over a three-week period. Now you might say, geez, that's a really big task. Maybe it is. I might have to cut it back. But, you know, I have great confidence in my program, so I'm thinking that's a good goal for Johnny. But again, this is just a hypothetical case. Another goal I might have for Johnny also is that after reading a variety of written material, and notice this time he is reading the, the material himself, at the sixth grade level, and I might use classroom content material like out of the science book or out of the geography book, Johnny will respond to comprehension questions for both meaning and inference with an 85 to 90 percent accuracy. Why did I choose 85 to 90 percent? Well, because that's 
really what the general classroom teacher uses as a way of measuring mastery. So again, these are just two possible goals. You might have different goals that you have identified, and a lot of it is based on what information we have about Johnny. And at this point, we're using pretty much hypothetical information. So I want you to give it a try. Um, see if you can make it better. Um, here is a goal statement. When tested, Sarah will read at the fifth grade level. How would you make that better? Stop the tape, write a better statement, and then come back. Here is one way of making it better. Again, it's one way. Given a passage in the fifth grade literature book, Sarah will read 130 to 150 words per minute with fewer than five errors in one minute in three consecutive trials over a three-week period of time. That would be one way of improving it. Here's another uh, goal statement that you can try to make better. This one looks at behavior. The statement says, June will turn in homework on time, complete in-class assignments, and pass tests given in class. So how would you make that better? Turn off the tape for a minute, make some notes, and when you're ready, turn the tape back on, and I'll show you my statement that makes it better. So here's the new and improved statement for June. June will meet all required classroom activities, including submitting homework on time, completion of in-class assignments, and passing tests in accordance with classroom standards for maintaining a C or better letter grade for the class consistently for a time period of six months. So that's an, one option. There are others. It's not the only one. But I do want to interject here a little bit about this consistently for a time period of six months because sometimes it's best to give sort of a criterion. Don't just stop with maintaining a C or better, but for how long might that might June have that C in order to make sure that she's really mastered it. One more to try. Give this one a try. Another social one. Um, this time, Randy will have basic needs met by making appropriate requests to a variety of adults. Again, stop the tape. When you're ready and you've written out your improvement, come back and I'll show you my improvement. So here's how I improved that statement. Across all settings, Randy will use his communication system to indicate all needs. For example, bathroom, drink, or eat, go outside, throughout the school day for five consecutive days. Those are three examples of statements that were OK, maybe, but they could be improved on. And I hope that you um, were able to improve on those. And you probably had some better ideas even than I did. And now it's time to go back to your own IEP and do a little bit of a review. Um, I want you to go to any of your IEP statements that you, or IEPs that you have on a student or several students and read your goal statements and ask yourself, are they SMART goals? Are they specific, measurable, achievable, results and oriented, and time bound? Do they meet all of those criteria? Are they co connected to the present level statements? And do my present level statements include a reference to the standards? Because that's really where we need to see it. Um, because the goal statements have to lead up to the standards. And then finally, will the goal support this student's ability to meet grade level standards and make progress in the general curriculum? And probably that fourth statement is the really critical one because it tells you whether or not you have the appropriate goal statement on that IEP. Great, Carol. Thanks.